Okay, everybody, welcome to tonight's training. Uh, my name is Trevor, and I'm going to be hosting tonight. We are talking about a website called Dig, D I G G. This is dig.com. And this used to be, years ago, this used to be one of the premier spots online to submit content. Um, we've been talking the last few weeks about submitting content to different places. We've talked about reddit.com. We've talked about stumble, stumbleupon.com. And, and dig kind of falls in line with that. We'd call these places um, sort of like news aggregators. In other words, the idea behind this, and at the time when it was created, it was created clear back in 2004. So it's pretty old, right? At least in... In, in the digital world, it's old. So this was created in 2004. Um, the idea behind this, and it was one of the, the unique ideas at the time, it was like, let's create a website that you can submit content to, that users have the right to vote for that content to, to say whether or not they, they like it or not. Okay, this, is, this was revolutionary at the time, right? Because before, when you got on the internet, nothing was voted for. It was just like people would post news stories and it, you know, take it or leave it. But Dig was one of the first places out there that, that aggregated all of these news stories together. And then users were able to simply vote on which ones they liked. It's the same concept as, um, as Reddit, really. Only Reddit came a little bit later. So, so that, that was Dig. So... I would say if you were in to digital marketing back in like 2007, um, 2008, somewhere, somewhere in that neighborhood, if you would have had something that you wanted to really get out to the masses, you would have actually started here. I mean, it was that popular. You want something to go viral, you started on Dig. And so I remember back then I was um I was in internet marketing consulting. I hadn't been in the industry that long, just a matter of a few years. Um but I remember several of my colleagues um touted this as being just the best place ever to submit your content. And so what would happen is if you could get to the front page of Dig, it's kind of the same thing as Reddit, right? So you have this front page like this. It's got all these, you know, these these random news stories. It's not nearly as good as Reddit because these stories aren't really tailored or curated to, to our liking. So, like, I can't, I can't come to dig and like things. You remember on Reddit, if I can just remind you real quick, here's Reddit, which I think is just a much, much better version of dig. Reddit allows me to choose my interests and then only see things I'm interested in. Right? Which is why on my, my front page here, you see stuff about gardening and sports and uh, so on and so forth. Personal finance. But on, on Dig, I see nothing of the kind. I just see random randomly selected articles. Okay? So it's not, it's not super user-friendly. It didn't always used to be like this. In fact, they said uh, back in 2000, so 2000, 2007, 2008 was kind of its heyday they'd get somewhere in the neighborhood of 250 million visitors annually, which was a big deal. Um, like I said, if you want something to go viral and spread through the internet, you started it here on dig.com. Well, in 2010, um, the, the, the views on this website were going down. It was starting to lose momentum. And, uh, Basically, they changed up ownership. Another company came in and bought them out. And then 2012 comes around and they, they do a huge redesign on the site. And basically now, if you do any research at all, Dig is completely and utterly irrelevant. Um, you can submit content here, and I'm going to show you how to do that. But I, I would rather you spend your time doing marketing in other places. So if you ever hear somebody recommend it strongly, um, it, it's, uh, <laughs> that speaks to maybe the level of what they know about internet marketing now because Dig is, is virtually worthless. So here's what you would have done, okay, had this still been relevant. There's a spot here at the bottom of the site. All the, I had to scroll all the way down here, by the way. See all these articles I'm scrolling down through? Scroll, 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 all the way down here at the bottom. 
I can submit a link. And I know this is very small, so I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. I can click submit a link. Okay. If I click submit a link, it gives me this very, very basic submit a link to dig. Okay. So let's say I want to submit one of my websites. So I'm going to submit financialnut.com. Okay. So I'm going to submit here. I'm going to hit submit. And all it says is thanks for submitting financialnut.com. Now, what happens to the content at this point? I don't really know. I think it actually goes to some of their editors. So Dig at one point was like this big company. They're still based out of somewhere in, in New York City, but they're down to like uh, like 25 employees now. So it's not, it's not a big company anymore at all. Um, in their heyday, you guys will find this interesting. In their heyday, this back in 2007, 2008, they were in talks with Google. Google wanted to buy Dig because it was very popular and and they felt like they could buy it up and grow it. And and so they were in talks with selling their business, Dig.com, to Google for somewhere in the neighborhood of $200 million. And um, anyway, I, nobody knows real, the real details about what happened in those talks, but they didn't, they didn't make a deal. That was, that was, that was kind of where it left it. Nobody made a deal and they both went their separate ways. And then recently, I think this was back in like 2012, 2013, when they sold it, um, they, it sold for somewhere in the neighborhood of like 15 million, which, you know, to us, right, that's a lot of money, of course. But when just years ago, you were worth in the neighborhood of 200 million, that tells you what happened to your website and your business. It's, uh, it's kind of a dying breed. So now it used to be cool. You used to be able to submit content and it used to matter and people would see it. Um, part of the downfall, which I think you guys will find a, sort of interesting because I certainly did is I was doing more dig um, years ago is there were a certain number of, of users on dig that were, were extremely influential. So um, what would happen is just like with uh, Reddit, we've talked about this. If you look like, if you look here at Reddit's homepage, You'll notice that the stuff that's on the homepage of Reddit is currently upvoted a number of times. This this item right here has been upvoted 4,478 times. This one right here, 1,008. This one, 4,960 some odd times, so on and so forth. So things that, that go to the front page of Reddit are always very popular and get voted on a lot. Well, what happened on Dig is there, they, they, there became this sort of... Um, inner circle of dig users and there's just a group of them and they, they uh very powerful very influential where basically what they would do is they would take a piece of content and they would submit it to dig and they would have like affiliate advertisements all over it and stuff to to help them make money off of the content and then they'd go out and they'd contact firms outside of the country india specifically india was referenced as being one of their places they'd go and they would hire a bunch of um, Indian computer people to create dig accounts and to upvote or dig their articles. So one of these people would submit an article and then immediately you'd get this mass number of digs just right away. Just because they knew, you know, they, they, they knew so many people and they had these connections out in India. Well, so these group of, you know, whatever number of people there are, 10, 15 dig users would consistently dominate the homepage of dig. And so the whole, the whole point of dig was initially to take the best stuff on the internet and have users be able to vote for what's best, like a democracy, right? And that content would show up there at the top, but that didn't happen because it got manipulated and dominated by this select group. And that was it. That was, that was what would, that would, that's really what would happen. And, and so nobody else, people like you and I, who had really great content that we were submitting, could never get anywhere, would never get found. And so that was part of the downfall. And so from, from there on out now to today, um, you get on to dig here and it's not, it's not even really the same site anymore. It's got articles on the homepage that are basically, basically posted by editors. Um, you can create an account and you can submit content just like I did, but it'll probably never show up anywhere. 
Um, there is a there is an outside chance if it's a really good piece of content that it may make it to the home the front page of Dig. But here, if there's one way to indicate how worthless this now is, if you look at what's on the home page of Dig right now, um, you can see how many times an, an an article has been quote unquote dug, okay? Which would be like a like. So right here, this has 11 digs, this has four, this has seven. In other words, this is on the home page of Dig, and and it literally is getting these articles are getting very little interest at all. Um, which basically means that that people just don't use Dig anymore like they used to. All right, 21, 8, 28. Anyway, it's just not it's just not worth your time. Now, again, why uh, why do I share this with you guys tonight? Well, I, I want you guys just to know that that when you're in when you're in digital marketing, and I can speak to this because I've been in it for long enough, things change very quickly, and you know, you you can you can hear about a strategy that worked at one point that no longer works today. And this is a this is a great example. Had had we been having this same conversation with this group um, eight years ago, I would have been telling you guys who had just published your websites. I would have been saying, "Go to dig.com because it works. Your content can go viral. You'll get a ton of traffic. It's great for affiliate marketing." Um, now, now I would never say that ever because things have changed, right? And so I. That's that's part of the value, I suppose, and you guys being in a program like this. If if you weren't in a program like this, you would have to stay on top of all of these changes on the internet. You would have to stay on top of Google's um, ranking formula changes because those change all the time. Since I've since I've been in this business, probably a dozen different times, Google has rolled out massive changes as to how they choose to rank sites. Dig companies like this come and go, and now are, are no longer really used anymore. Companies like Reddit, who were at one point uh, sort of like the the ugly redheaded stepchild to Dig, are now very prominent and used all the time. So, I mean, just just if you can look at the value of this program as a whole, and I know sometimes you know when you make a big investment, and you're in a program like this, you think to yourself, well. I invested a lot to be here. What am I really getting out of it, right? Some of you guys are making good money right now. Others are are spitting and sputtering along. And it's like, when you really think about it, you're like, I'm, you know, is this really worth it? I can tell you it is because we have a team of people here, your coaches included, that that spend their time studying this kind of stuff and then turn around and share it with you so that we can shorten your learning curve and make sure you don't waste time on places like Dig. I was actually online looking at some stuff recently, just kind of looking at what's out there about Dig, and I was finding places that actually recommended it still. Talking about how it's it's a good resource and it's a great place to to submit your content, and it's like, well, n no, it's not. And and why are you still sharing that, right? So I, I mean, our goal here is in this coaching program, especially in these marketing trainings, is I. I hope just to shorten all of your guys' learning curves a little bit and not only tell you the things to do, but we want to share with you some things to avoid. And so we feel like this really fits into that category. And because I've seen it touted as a good marketing resource, um, I, I, I want to just sort of save you guys the time. And if you are going to spend any time on like a social news aggregating site, um, or a social bookmarking site, which is which is what Dig is and, and Reddit is. And of course, last week we talked about StumbleUpon. Let's make sure we spend our time in the right places and, and do our work on what's legit right now and what actually works, which in my opinion, I mean, there's other websites that, that are great to work with, but based on what we've talked about in our Thursday night meetings, Reddit and StumbleUpon should be where you spend your time, okay? Um, let me see if there's anything else I wanted to say other than, I guess with with Dig, it certainly doesn't hurt to create an account. If if you've got a really great piece of content that you've worked really hard on, can you go and submit it to Dig? You bet you can. 
And just like, just like I did with you guys a second ago, I submitted a piece of content and you saw just how easy that was. I just put in the address and I was done. So uh, feel comfortable doing that, but don't spend much more time on it. Uh, there's a few people that actually like using Dig still and come to their homepage and they'll go to their sports section or whatever. And that's fine. I mean, use it if you want to, but I'll tell you what, if I'm going to use some sort of an aggregator type site, uh, Reddit is a thousand times better um, than what you're going to get on Dig. Okay. Okay. So let me see real quick if I've got any comments or questions. This, this was supposed to be kind of a, a pretty straightforward training tonight. Um, Cheryl, you say apart from Reddit and StumbleUpon, which are some of the other best sites to use? We'll be sharing those in the coming Thursdays. I, I could list them out for you, but that would be silly. Let's let's talk about them individually as we meet on, or sorry, on our Thursday meetings. Um, if you if you aren't currently using Reddit or StumbleUpon, please start and use it on a personal level so that you can be prepared to start submitting content to it soon. Um, that's an interesting question, Oliver. Who, who prevents the same takeover by influential users in Reddit? Um, it's, it's I, I don't know. I mean, I guess the thing about Reddit's culture is they're very sort of anti um, promotional material. So what the dig, what dig people would do is they would, they would get together and dig these articles to the homepage of dig, but the, the, the motive behind that would be the affiliate ads that were on the site or what was being promoted on the site or the Google AdSense that was on the site and they'd make thousands of dollars off of it. Reddit is different because they're very, very careful um, about people submitting content with the express purpose of just making money off of that content. So the community as a whole doesn't like it, first of all. Um, second, the thing that's nice about Reddit is um, I suppose you could you could create your own conglomerate of, of other Redditors that, that would upvote your content. That's possible, but it's hard it's harder to get away with. They've they've got some safeguards in place. Um, to make it to where it's not the same. That's why when I was telling you earlier, if you want to look legit in the Reddit community, you actually have to get in there and use it and be part of these different subreddits. Or else, if you get in there and just start immediately upvoting stuff like crazy and you haven't even been using Reddit, you know, you could get your account suspended. It's just that they won't put up with it. So it's just, it's better done. There's safeguards in place here where it won't have the same sort of takeover like it did before. Um, let's see. Oh yeah. When you submit Catherine, that's a good question. So I submitted just my main URL. Um, that's probably not the best thing to do. Submit your best piece of content. So if you're going to submit something to, uh, to dig and you come down all the way down here to the bottom and you click submit a link, you want to submit something that's really sort of impressive. And I would argue the same thing. Use Dig just a little bit so it doesn't look like you're just signing up to submit content. You'd want to use it for a few minutes here and there, like some stuff, dig some stuff, um, and then and then come and submit a really well done piece of content. The URL you would submit would go directly to that piece of content. Um, yeah, Barbara, you can at any time on Stumble Upon. You can always change your area of interest, no doubt. Uh, Michael, I've got some trainings on it. If you're interested in learning about Reddit or StumbleUpon, uh, we've got some trainings online. In fact, I think I've showed you guys this before. Just go to YouTube, um, do a search for my name here at the top, or, or you could email me directly if, if we're working together. But go to my channel page, click on playlists, and then go to affiliate marketing. And down here under affiliate marketing, Michael, you've got a bunch of trainings on Reddit and StumbleUpon or StumbleUpon that we've been doing over the last month or so. Robert, you love StumbleUpon? Yeah, I, I do too. I, I think most of you guys will say the same thing if, if you actually use it. I mean, we taught StumbleUpon last week for 30 minutes and 
I'm telling you, it, it might seem like a waste, right? Like there's a million different ways to waste time on the internet. I'm telling you, stumble upon is one of the very best ways because it really provides you with some awesome content. Whereas dig, uh, I can't really say the same for because editors choose that content. Whereas it, it really stumble upon and Reddit are like a democracy. People are choosing what content shows up. So you know, it's going to be good. You definitely know it's going to be good. Okay. Well guys, there's, there's an example of what not to waste your time on tonight. So I'm going to leave you with that. We're going to talk more about these social sites as we go along. Um, so be prepared for that on a Thursday. We will reconvene next week. Same time, same place. Um, thanks for coming along. Hopefully this is helping you in your marketing efforts. We'll see you next time.